question. Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is August 24th, and this is the EU-US edition. Uh, today we have myself, uh, Bruno Verachten, and Chris Stern joining us. Uh, if Mark uh, is, shows up, welcome him. Otherwise, uh, I'll just take his name off the list for right now, but I have a suspicion he'll be joining us. Uh, today on the agenda, uh, so some updates on the Google Summer of Code. Uh, Chris has volunteered to provide a uh, demo of the version doc site, which is uh, one of the projects that uh, Vandi, Vandi has been working on. Chris has been uh, mentoring. So uh, we'll look forward to that. Uh, some blog posts that were published uh, recently. We had our newest, our latest LTS release yesterday and weekly on Tuesday. Uh, the process of choosing a plugin bomb. Uh, the proposal for Java 11, 17, and 21 uh, in terms of Jenkins support and where we go from here. Uh, a new section in the documentation for stuff like support policies and Java requirements. Uh, a note on val.sh and just some notes on DevOps World Tour. Uh, is there anything else that we should add to the agenda or anything else anyone would like to discuss today? Okay. Oh, and Vandy is here as well. Welcome, Vandy. Okay, great. Cool. Um, so, uh, as far as the agenda, so Google Summer Code starting off with, um, would you, would you like to do a demo of the doc site? Or do, do, would we rather like to come back to that? We can discuss other things first. Um, can we discuss other things first? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, my my system is lagging. I think I will reboot it and then I'll join yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. No worries, Andy. Thanks. Appreciate it. I'll just stick it down here for now so that it's out of the way. Cool. All right. So let Andy fix his thing. Cool. Uh, so uh, moving on then. So for the blog post that we recently published. So. Uh, we have uh, the Linux containers needed to be rebuilt recently. So um, this is something that Damian uh, and Mark worked on. Mark had, uh, writ had written this blog post announcing it and kind of just sharing what happened and uh, what we did. Uh, we also had a nice blog post from uh, Andrea, who was uh, who did an internship with Jenkins Security over the summer, um, and this is a really nice insight and recap of his experience, his internship, uh, and you know what things they worked on, learned, it's it, like got from it, and uh, what he was able to accomplish. Um, but really nice insights here. Re thanks so much to uh, Andrea, Kevin, and Wadik for all. Um, you know, helping with the internship, participating in the internship, being such great mentors for the internship, et cetera. Uh, this, this is impossible without the right, with the team work there. Uh, and then uh, finally, the last blog post that we've had published is uh, actually an update from another one of our Google Summer of Code participants from, this is from Harsh, uh, and uh, he was part of the GitLab plugin modernization project. Uh, and again, a really nice recap of the project, what things they accomplished, what things they worked on, goals, um, and the just their experience overall. Um, and we'll have more of these coming uh, shortly with the Google Summer of Code uh, heading into its final stretch and uh, other participants kind of getting to the wrapping up point of their projects. We'll be, they'll, they're submitting their uh, blogs and they'll be published. Uh, yeah, Mark. So it's worth noting that we should expect a blog post from each of the Google Summer of Code contributors, including Vandit, uh, because part of the submission packet to Google, it requires a summary of their work. And the blog post is and has been repeatedly preferred as the way to summarize the work. It lets them point to link to pull requests, link to demos, link to the video of the midterm presentation. All those things are very helpful. Mm -hmm. That's all that I had to say on it. Great. Thanks very much, Mark. Yeah. And uh, I, I truly appreciate just getting a chance to read through the blog posts and learn about their experiences and what, um, what, what kind of progress and like work they've been able to do on these projects. Cause 
uh, from a documentation standpoint, I don't necessarily get as much uh, in-depth experience with some of these, but it's really great to just see that come across. So. Okay, uh, next up on the agenda, so uh, LTS 2.414.1 released yesterday. So our new baseline has released. Uh, change log and upgrade guide are available. Uh, and thanks to Daniel Beck for helping clarify uh, protocol for the security entries. Uh, there was one that was added into the uh, change log and upgrade guide that had been released in a previous uh, LTS, but still noted here. So um, there was a little bit of determination needed to be happening and, and make sure we're putting the right information in. So um, thanks to Daniel Beck for clarifying that. Uh, and we also had our weekly 2.420 release on Tuesday. So uh, there were some issues in the initial building, but we got that release. So that is available as well. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, the process of choosing a plugin, uh, plug-in bill of materials version. Um, and this is something that we started discussing last week. Um, and is further discussed in this issue for Jenkins um, in Jenkins GitHub. Uh, but essentially explaining that um, there are various uh, reference, there's, sorry, there are, sorry, um, Mark, would you be able to uh, speak a little bit? Sorry, picking up here. So yeah. choosing a plug-in bill of materials version? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the the story there is we've got, before before I left on vacation, we had a good conversation with the uh, one of the developers, a plug-in developer who said, hey, I don't know how to choose which release of the plug-in bill of materials I should insert into my POM file because they're sort of a mix of, all, I've got to combine two or three different data sources to get the answer, which one should I include? And the, the person is exactly correct. It's, it's more complicated because the plugin bill of materials supports multiple Jenkins versions concurrently, but it can only release a single thing at a time. <laughs> and so that, that combination of multiple Jenkins versions, but releasing one, one, ver one bomb at a time means, oh, I have to look at things differently. So we've got some more work to do here to describe the, to, to give a better description. And if you scroll further down, Joseph Peterson gives one suggestion right at the top here where he says, hey, let's put it into choosing a baseline. And then another user, another developer puts in an additional suggestion that says, yeah, you know what? We should also consider this other location. And they're both right, right? It's every place we can describe, here's a good place to make this choice, all the better. And, and this may be a place where we need Bruno's skills with update CLI in order to submit pull requests that automatically update the documentation to say, look, this is the current version of this thing. So it's, but those kind of things are part of this, more work is needed. Great, thank you so much, Mark. Uh, and with that work, we'll, announce things and it uh, could potentially be an option for Hacktoberfest, but time will tell. Yeah, yeah, I think that one probably won't be Hacktoberfest. It's more technically detailed than most Hacktoberfest contributors could be successful at doing. Fair enough, that works. Okay, um, next on the agenda. So um, the uh, ongoing discussion about the uh, proposal that Mark's created for uh, Jenkins and Java 11, Java 17, and Java 21 support and where we're at, what our next steps look like, and plans yeah. for uh, supporting and ending support. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, and this one, this one needs some further refinement because I am I diagram something on my whiteboard and the diagram on my whiteboard highlighted a surprising side effect of the current proposals. And so I've got to bring... I've realized I've got to do pictures and I'll do pictures before I bring this proposal to the broader community in particular, because some things I think in the, in this proposal are too aggressive and I've got to talk about why they're too aggressive and explain it to people. And pictorial is the pictorially is the way to explain it saying, look, this is how the calendar looks. If we're, if we do this, it's, it's too aggressive in this context 
if we if we transition towards that aggressive posture and in a year or two get to being that that good great so i'll more work is needed here and that work will be in the form of pictorially building an explanation that i can share with the jenkins developer list probably will be a jenkins enhancement proposal because it's really becoming a process that will tie us to the Java releases every approximately two years. Every Java is now on this six month clock. They release a new major version of Java every six months and every two years, they release a new LTS. So 17 was two years ago, 21 is now, and the next one will probably be 25, two years from now. So, so they've gotten on a nice regular clock and we can benefit by by setting ourselves that kind of a pattern, but I've got to outline it first how we get there. Okay, uh, lately I've been trying to write a blog post about JDK 21 and Jenkins and RIS 5, and I just noted that the paint was still wet when it comes to defining which versions of Java uh, Jenkins will support in the coming months and years. So I'll be very... Um, prudent uh when I read something so whenever you see the blog post uh pr please have a look at that so that you yeah, can correct the, my uh, errors and and your description is right the paint is still wet right the the discussions on this thing started with the jenkins board and the jenkins officers we'll now bring the discussions to jenkins developers and the jenkins user list it won't be a final decision till after it's been through discussion with the jenkins developers and the jenkins users list yeah. So we've we've got a lot of a lot of discussion yet, but it's a big enough change that I think, or it's a it's an important enough change that I think it's worth spending the investment now to think carefully about it, so that we can talk very clearly about it for future releases. Yep. Sorry, Vandi. Sorry, Chris. I'm bl blathering on. <laughs> That's it. Well, thanks, Mark. I appreciate the the insights there. And um, side note on Java 21, it is available now as of yesterday in the LTS as a uh, preview, uh, preview availability. So uh, not full, fully there, but it is available and supported. So it is usable within Jenkins now. Okay. Um, so next up on the agenda, uh, Vandi, uh, everything working on your system, everything good to go on your side? Okay, cool. So then... Yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen if you want to go ahead and pick it up. And uh, yeah. yeah, we'll go into a demo of the version doc site that Vandi has been working on during Google Summer of Code. Can and uh, yeah. 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 So uh, I think the things where I would like to start on would be the version documentation. So uh, starting with how we are versioning, we'll have a drop down on, uh, on version pages. So the version pages are user documentation and developer documentation, and from, from we can we can change we can change the versions from the page we are on. Maybe if maybe a, a like if a person searches on Google, uh, and he he comes to this page, and but the version he is using is previous ones. These are just for demo right right now, but there'll be uh, LTS versions, previous LTS versions. So he he would be able to switch from here the on the about the version he is on. Also, if he, he directly wants to change the version and the page, and like if he wants to access the solutions page, which contains the Jenkins solution, he can just go to Jenkins solution page and from, uh, or you can say he can choose from here to change the change the version. Uh, after that, we have these version pages. We have we have changed we have changed the how, how we have changed how solution pages look, uh, in for comparatively comparatively to Jenkins .io. So uh, after that we have developer documentation, which is which is not which is which is not versioned because because uh, as a developer as a developer if a, if a code gets updated we don't need to have the entry of how previous code worked or that so we have that uh, in the in the UI UX seg meeting we uh, I I also I also say I also propose that we will be changing the home page. We'll create a home page which will be created with Gatsby, and then it will it will re and from there you can redirect you can be redirected to this uh, all these pages. 
currently we are using the uh, header and the nav bar from the jenkins io components repository uh, maintained by gavin morgan so we are since these are used by a plugin site and all that so all these sites that's uh, currently these are not uh, mapped correctly so that will be done by the end of the program when we'll be good to go to push everything into production and we'll talk with the team about that uh, after that we we have changed we have changed how something how some things were looking previously uh well previously uh, if you um yeah previously if you if on some pages like if you go to if you go to the international and inter, if you go to this page um yeah so previously on pages which were in working progress it was it, it there it was there was a there was a warning symbol somewhere there we can we can still add that but uh, it it was not in, it was not completely uh, increasing the user experience so i did not but we can do that and the admonitions blocks uh, and the, on the pages will look like something like this the code blocks the code blocks will look something like this and if we move if we move to some other pages uh, if we go to the community page we, this is how this is how the participate and contribute page looks like so from here for we from here we can we we can go to other pages currently the main problem in in documentation perspective is we have a lot of links that are not that are not working because how ostruct use uh, references link uh, links to the other pages is different than how entora does it so we uh, we have completed a lot we have i have already migrated a lot of pages and fixed them, them but still we ha we have to we have to test we have to test it before pushing it into production that all the links are working because that will that will heavily influence the user experience of the people who are, who use jenkins.io as uh, as a place to look into how jenkins work uh, after that we, we uh, after that current current currently the components are currently the components are, are working well really well the the uh, we the jsoc projects section uh, in jenkins.io we have a project and projects you uh, projects uh, section so the project section contains a uh, previous year jenkins dot uh, uh, previous year google summer of code in jenkins section uh, i still have i still have to refactor all of them because they use a they use the layout of simple jsoc page and jsoc page uh, simple jsoc project page which uh, these three pages are different so uh, i'll i i am working on that currently to give it a give it a some type of uniformity in all pages uh, we and uh, if we go to the idea section if i can find that uh, uh, currently currently the sidebar is not well updated for the jenkins project page because uh, there are a lot of pages and i need to i need to uh, consider how i would put that in a hierarchical way so like it does not it does not make the sidebar very long and so so we don't have to scroll somewhere we don't have to scroll uh, after that after that we have we have we have the accepted idea space looking exactly how it look, looks on jenkins.io uh, i still have to add the images uh, th that i'm i'm I, I i i have added that but it is not working uh, because i i think it is because it is inside uh, it is inside a table that's why it is not working so i'll i'll find a look around for it uh, uh, but uh, th these are working and the author profiles the author profiles are yet to be created with gatsby that won't take much time and after that we can link the author profiles everywhere uh, on on this site uh after that if we after that if we, if we go to the event section we asked we, we i'm still working on we are, i'm still working on fixing the e card because uh, we get a we get a card on jenkins.io uh, I, I i saw how it work i know i now know how it works where previously i did not know it uses a data.yml file to change the events that are listed on the card we have the event calendar that 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 was in, integrated with the, with by chris because uh, ruby is not something i can handle pretty well so chris really helped me there uh yeah so yeah this was it if you, if you guys have any question feel free to ask me The version documentation is just the user docs. 
the other the right. projects for instance if you go uh, to projects yeah. yeah those those are not versioned right yeah okay because because i have a long-standing action item no progress very little progress on it but i have a long-standing action item to convert this thing from the concept of projects and um project and sigs into a single concept called working groups so so i'm not overly concerned about whether or not the projects thing renders really well we've got to rework it in a major way to combine two concepts that are currently described on on the page special interest groups and projects need to become one thing working groups because it's really difficult to tell the difference between a SIG and a project. Um, yeah, but and, and also, yeah, yeah, and also, like you said, I, while I was doing all that, I saw that many, many uh, SIGs and projects were, were like inter, in, interconnected. Yeah, so that could, if, if we in future try to do that, that would be really easy because we'll only have to move the files. Uh, since I, I'm, I'm currently giving them a uniformity so we only we will only have to change the change move the files and merge content so that would be that would help it in the future because currently if you see uh when i when i also miss the jenkins projects uh, jenkins project docs docs because i thought a project and projects is just one thing but when i was checking i was double checking if i did not miss anything that is not migrated yet then i saw that oh my the project section is still to be migrated so so could you open jenkins project i didn't realize that there were two different things so projects is this one what's the singular form of it the jenkins project thing what's there it oh, is, oh right. This about, is the yeah. governance. This is governance. the governance material. Okay, thank yeah, you. All right. So this is governance. Got it. And and so the Jenkins project, it's correctly named, but projects of the Jenkins project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, this, this one. This this these two really confused me too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So that's how we can change the version and that all that the version things are solution page tutorials and user documentation because uh the advisories the advisory is a single page generated yml generated single page uh like it contains the change logs uh, which is which is a yml generated single page so we'll 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 do that with gatsby because uh, since it is yml generated i don't think so uh uh, someone wants to someone wants to like uh, manually do that because we can keep keep using the yml files uh, change that and it will reflect on the uh, on the site so yeah that was from my site i'll stop sharing now so actually be well before you oh. stop sharing so yeah. i think there are more questions if you've got more time to ask yeah, to answer yeah, questions yeah. vandit so yeah. could you take us back to the top level so on the here on the solutions pages, that one should that be versioned? So this I understand if I understand correctly is versioned, and I guess uh, this yeah. is a question to Kevin and to to Bruno more than to more than to anybody else. It's solutions seem like yeah maybe they should be versioned, but then again, it's not a hot high high speed fast changing thing, but they could be very different between. Jenkins 2.400 and Jenkins 2.600. Yeah, like I see what I see. I see what you're trying to uh, convey. I I I made them version because uh, if we have some solution, uh, if we if we think of it as a standpoint that someone wants to see if Jenkins is something they can use for their project or their their needs, so they can visit the solution page and check out the yeah, it is integrated with this. I can use it from that point of view. I should not be version. I made it versions version because I thought and I, I like I just got to realize that I thought uh, since on the versions we can you can like a person will a person can see if. A solution related to his problem, like uh, his need, is version is in this version or not? But yeah, I I I think if from both of these POVs, I I I think we can we it could, it should not be version. I can I can change that. No no no, quite the opposite. Yeah, I think yeah. I think your your choice may have been exactly correct. I'm really going to ask for Bruno and and Kevin, versioned or not versioned in terms of this one. 
<laughs> I would say version, but maybe not linked to the version of Jenkins. Uh, that's what would be difficult for me to, to judge. You know, um, when should we create a new version of this? I don't have the answer. Well, but but I think given that you said versioned, I think the only choice for version for me is tied to the Jenkins version because that's the only clear version I can tie to. And I, I like that because that means these should be versioned. Kevin, your answer. Um, I guess, uh, are the solution pages intended to be something uh, as a general statement for something like Android or PHP? Or is it um, intended to be more specific and where that version of Jenkins really comes into play. Um, or I guess it, it, like in terms of one of these examples, like Python, for example, um, is there a major difference between the, like the last like few Jenkins versions where having a versioned option for this page makes more sense? There, There isn't. And mostly that's because no one's taken the time to revise the solutions pages. And, and so I think for me, that that is a problem I would love to have, but we don't have. Uh, but I think we, we can see, conceive of how we would have it because many of these descriptions won't work with older Jenkins versions. And so the descriptions that talk about, um, let's say Jenkins and Ruby, if it makes the mistake of talking about Jenkins plugins implemented with Ruby, that no longer works. And so that would be version specific. Now, I don't think it does, right? These are just plugins that can help a Ruby developer. And so they're, they're, they're perfectly fine. But we had a period where you could actually write plugins in Ruby or write plugins in Python. And we've taken that capability away because it was impossible to maintain. So, so for me, yeah. uh, for, go ahead, and, Bruno. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Mm -mm, I'm done. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was thinking of dependencies outside of the Jenkins ecosystem, uh, unfortunately, for the versions of the Android solutions. For example, uh, when we had um, new features in Docker that help us with uh, Android. Yeah, but also it's somehow tied to some of the plugin version that we use for Android, for example. I'm thinking of the Docker uh, plugin. So it's not directly linked to the version of Jenkins, but more of external dependencies or plugin that we use in the Jenkins ecosystem. That's not an easy question, in fact. Well, but, but that one might have a, a fun answer in that we might consider backing some of these solutions with a plugins.txt file and a container image oh. that says, because we think we're going to do that with Ashutosh's example, with Ashutosh's tutorials, right? Where we will have versioned container images that represent yep. a point in time. So maybe, maybe this would be a similar thing where, hey, if you'd like to see this at that point in time, here's the current one and you could go back in its history. Yeah, that would be cool. You mean that you will have a different version of the Jenkins.io for each and every weekly release? No, no, no. This is only for LTS. No. It will be for okay. LTS only. Right. Yeah, I, I at least now, so as our mo my model in lobbying for that was command line Git has versions for every every version of Git that is a every minor version, and they only do minor versions every three months. So they get about four a year that they do, and that's all that they update up their, their documentation site typically on. Okay. Thanks, Vandit. I think I've finished all my questions. Does anyone have any other questions? Okay. So I don't have talk? any. Uh, yeah, go on, Kevin. I only have oh, no regrets, no questions. Yeah, same. Awesome. This looks great. I'm really excited. <laughs> Me too. I'll stop sharing now. Um, uh, I, I need to go somewhere. Can I drop the call right now if I am not needed? Yeah, of course, Wendy. Please yeah. take off. Do what you need to do. Thank you very much for sharing and uh, joining today. Very much appreciated. Thanks, Kevin. Bye, Bye Kevin. Bye, Chris. Bye, Bruno. Bye, Bye. Mark.
What a lovely demo. So that's great. Really excited. Looking forward to that. Um, we are coming up against time uh, and at time, if anything. So uh, is there any, so uh, on the agenda, we still have the additional platform information uh, section that, we're, that I'm working on uh, and a couple of mentions of uh, val.sh, which I just started reading about today uh, and DevOps World Tour. Is uh, there anything on here that anyone wants to discuss in depth or talk about further right now? No, veil.sh, I added it to the agenda. It's enough just to remind people that there are interesting command line tools that can evaluate our writing. Like, <laughs> oh, that's kind of nice. So it's think of it as sort of a Grammarly or that kind of thing, but in your command line. Yeah, I started uh, reading up on it after I saw it in the agenda. So I'm actually very curious and want to uh, find out more. Thanks, Mark. Great. All right. Then uh, we'll end the meeting here and then uh, until next time. But uh, the video will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and uh, until next time, take care. Thanks for joining and have a good day. Rest of your day. Thank Bye. you. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks, Chris.